Hey, what's up guys? iOS 13 is amazing. iPad OS simply blew me away. In today's video, I'd like to take a look at the biggest and best features regarding what makes iOS 13 so great on the iPad. iPad OS really is its own version. It's a completely different beast from iOS 13. And I'd like to take you through those biggest changes. My favorite features, oh my goodness. This really makes your iPad that much better. And it doesn't matter which device it's on, regardless of the fact whether it's a smaller iPad, a bigger iPad, newer or older, you actually stand to benefit from iPad OS in many ways. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. Okay, so let's begin. I wanted to start by saying iPad OS is not the same thing as iOS 13 exactly. It is its own software and it's very clear just from looking at it on the home screen. Apple added a new vertical row of icons, things look more condensed, and I'm a little disappointed that they didn't do the same to the iPhone. I think it would have looked great, especially on the max sized iPhones, but we do have a few more betas. Should I be holding out hope for that? I don't know. But anyways, it looks good regardless of which iPad you have, whether it's a small one or a bigger one. To me, the new icon structure looks good regardless of which iPad it's on. It just feels more natural now, more like a real computer where you can fit more icons onto the same screen. Now slide over to the right and there's a new widgets view. If you slide down, the spotlight is still there. I don't agree with that. It should do the same thing, especially in landscape. So slide over to the right, there's this beautiful animation. On the top, it should be the same way. Slide down and spotlight should kind of condense the icons downwards. Now the iPad does also get a few new wallpapers, which are nice. I'd like to see more being added, more of the older ones, but it's cool, especially on an iPad transitioning to and from the dark mode has this beautiful effect on a larger display. So very cool all around. Next up, dark mode. Now I've been using dark mode on the jailbroken scene for quite some time. And I gotta tell you on iOS 13, it looks particularly good. It has no right looking this good yet. Every single app is custom tailored in some like the notes, there's a custom texture in the background. To me, it's apparent. Dark mode on the iPad is custom tailored, looks really good, and it's clear that Apple took their time actually making every single application look good. And moving on to the usability in iPad OS. So slide over has been made better. Now you can have multiple windows of the same application in slide over, and you can just keep stacking them. They have their own app switcher style card view here. Looks really good, very functional. It's a little rough. Right now it's quite buggy. It doesn't always work for me, but but when it does, it's quite good. Very, very smooth and fluid. And this alone to me is very interesting to see. Slide over originally when it was released was not this good. It evolved to get here and it's only gonna keep getting better with time. So multitasking has been taken to the next level. Now the new slide over feature is complemented by having multiple windows of the same application open at the same time. For example, here I'm having two different web pages in Safari side by side so I can absorb double the information or in notes, I can have two different notes open at the same time, just copy and paste between them. Text editing gets easier. Every application that you can think of becomes better using that new feature. Now, the way that you interact with your iPad regarding text has completely changed. Apple has made this so intuitive. It's one of the most ingenious things I've ever seen in action. So first off, last year, Apple introduced the quick type keyboard where you can just swipe down. This time around, they've completely made things better in every single way. So for example, the keyboard can now be shrunk just like that with a pinch and it's great. So you can move that around then with two fingers, place it anywhere you'd like and go ahead and type on it like an iPhone keyboard. Now, another thing is a quick path keyboard or the swipe keyboard. So you can go ahead and type just like that. And I'll say my name is Philip. Oh, okay, that was a fail on my end. <laughs> Philip, there it is. So as you can see, that works great. And let's go ahead and pop it back in. And the way that you actually interact with the cursor and text is completely different now. So I'll try and run you through it. There's a lot here to list, but the cursor can now be moved with just one finger. So you can place it anywhere you'd like. They got rid of the entire magnification system and it works great. Two, you can use two fingers to move the cursor around from anywhere on the screen and place it so you don't actually have to physically follow it and drop it anywhere. With two fingers, go ahead and double tap and then you can drag and select and that selects the entire text. It's a little finicky, but it does work. As you can see, very easy to select. With just one two finger tap, you can select the most recent word. And then with a double two finger tap, you can select the entire text line just like that. There are many little tricks here. I personally don't think I found all of them but uh, let's keep going here. So with three fingers, if you just select it, the text menu comes up. You can also hold it to bring that up. Let's go ahead and type some random stuff. Now a double tap with three fingers will undo. In this case, yeah, there it is, just worked. That menu comes up as well. Now a three finger swipe to the right is a redo and three finger swipe to the left is an undo. And then once you've selected text, a three finger pinch is a copy 
and then a three finger expand is a paste if it would work. There it is. There's certainly a lot to learn here. It's kind of hard to get the hang of, but once you do, it just feels natural. The copy paste system is great. The undo redo system is amazing. Seriously, like Apple, great work, very intuitive. And I'm excited to see this evolve. In my opinion, this is one of the biggest and best things to happen to iPad since the beginning right here. Just this little tiny feature is my favorite feature in iPad OS. And this one on its own is quite big. Apple has made the iPad a much more capable and competent computer by adding more keyboard shortcuts. So with any third party keyboard that you prefer, whether it's Apple's or Logitech's or Bridges, you can now use these new keyboard shortcuts. Now these shortcuts are primarily used in Safari. Depending on which application you have, you're gonna have different shortcuts in most cases, but there are about 30 new ones in Safari. And they'll of course make your life easier. Now that's not the only accessory that got some upgrades. The Apple Pencil on its own has gotten a 20 millisecond down to nine millisecond latency reduction. Personally, I could not tell the difference. And I don't know if this is because Apple hasn't implemented it yet. For me, the latency was already good. I've been using the iPad as a drawing tool for quite some time, never had an issue with it. So that's one thing that I'm glad that Apple took the initiative to make better, but it was good already. I personally could not tell the difference between iOS 12 and iOS 13. Now the markup tool though is quite the difference. And the new one is great. It's flickable. You can actually throw it between the corners. It's a lot of fun just to play with on its own, but it makes your job much easier doing things on the iPad. Apple software design team on point here. I love it. This is one of my favorite features. Now this combined with the new screenshot tool with an Apple pencil, just drag up from the bottom left corner and it'll take a screenshot of whatever you're doing. In Safari, you can take a full width screenshot, mark it up right there and send it on its way. Also, there's the new share sheet. Not only does it look prettier, it makes your life easier as well by removing several steps in the share process. And speaking of competent computing, what's a computer without a proper file system browser? Files has been made smarter now. It supports SSDs, SD cards, and USB drives. I was thrilled to discover that my Samsung T5 SSD worked, yet my X5 did not. I'm sure there are different power requirements there. The full file system, everything available at my fingertips, ready to transfer to my iPad. That is cool. And now folders can be shared through iCloud in files. So I was a doubter of this application at first. Now Apple has made it a much smarter app. Next up, Safari. So Safari has its own download manager now. Whatever you're downloading, whether it's RuneScape or files, you can download them here and then open them in the appropriate application. I do think the connection between Safari download manager and files should be stronger though. It's its own thing, but they should be combined. At the event, Apple took a considerable amount of time speaking about their full screen desktop mode in Safari on iOS 13 or iPad OS. I personally could not find a difference, measured it side by side by iOS 12 and on many websites, Jalopnik, uh, Mac Rumors, 9to5Mac, Reddit, everything was scaled properly on both. Any good website should already be scaling, so I'm sure that that feature is for those rare instances when it doesn't. And management of font is new in iOS 13. Certain applications will allow you to change it. Not all, it's not a system-wide feature, but where it's necessary in text editing applications, you'll be able to do that. Also, PS4 and Xbox One X controller support. So this was completely unexpected. This is Apple going above and beyond, and PlayStation did confirm it's coming late fall, so that's not available just yet. Considering how poorly iPad OS ran on my iPads, just things not working, bugging out, I was very surprised to find that Sidecar, the external display feature with the iPad, was working functionally great. In Catalina, of course you have to be running that on the MacBook, with the iPad on its side, it works fantastic. It's just like any other display, you have the ability to switch sides, to adjust the scaling, all that. It's its own fully functional display and it's baked right in. There's no external applications to buy no other displays, it's great. You get to use your stylus right there and the application support between this is going to change my life. Photoshop and all that, can't wait to start using it. I was unable to get this feature working with my iPad Pro 10.5 inch. I believe it is compatible, but it did not want to connect. So hoping that gets sorted out. My only other question is how many can you stack? As someone that has lots of iPads that do nothing but sit in the cabinet, can I stack like five of them together, 10 of them? 
We'll see. I personally did not try to do that yet. And there it is, guys. So I've been using this for just under three days. I gotta tell you, it has completely changed the way I use my iPad from text manipulation to just navigation, slide over, split screen within the same applications is huge. Sidecar alone, one of my favorite features. And fascinating to me, in a recent interview, Apple confirmed that they've been working on this interface for years. We heard about it in the leaks, but to see it in action, to actually use it, you really understand that Apple is playing the long game here. They had the hardware, now the software, it's time to catch up. And until September, we've got some time for the polish to appear. A lot of the features just are buggy. They're not working well. The iPads do stutter and glitch quite often. I would not recommend this on your personal iPad. If you have an older one with no risk, then do install it, get familiar, why not? But I'm excited to see this develop. This is before the full cross-platforming appears with iOS 14 between iPhone, iPad, and Macs, which will all supposedly have the same application. So. You can see where things are going and I can't wait to get there.